help us to be soft, pliable, moldable clay in the Master's hands. Mold us into vessels, Lord, that can be used for you. Flow in us and work through us. May we be a reflection of you. May everything we say and do bring praise, honor, and glory to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For you are truly Lord of lords and worthy to be praised, Lord. In your precious and holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Sunday to share the, the anointing of God's power and resurrection. Some people wonder what happened to Jesus that he could be alive when all his blood, all the blood, all the blood in his body was poured out for us. How could he be alive? The very glory of God runs in his veins. That's how he's alive. It's resurrection power. And if he was here today, you could touch him. You can hug him. You can you can hear him. You can talk to him. You can feel his hair. You can you can touch his feet. 
And you know that He's not dead. He's alive. Yes. He's alive forevermore. And He has bought for us that place. Yes. He has bought for us. That price has been paid. We, we now are the firstborn among His brethren. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory. Praise the name of Jesus, Father. How could we ever begin to thank you enough for sending your Son to die for us? And then he said, it's good for you that I go away, because then I send the Holy Ghost. I part to you my spirit, that you might be my people, that you might be the ones I've saved, the ones I've redeemed, the ones I've renewed, the ones who can make a difference in this world. Thank you, Lord, that you gave us everything you have. Lord, you poured it out upon us. You're the head, we're the body. And Lord, where the head is, there's the body. And what the head knows, the body can bring about. Thank you, Lord, for wisdom. Thank you, Lord, for, for anointing. Thank you, Lord, for the goodness of God in this place today. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, I want to give uh, credit to whom credit is due. I have a good friend that, that uh, I met a long time ago. We both happened to be on a, a trip to Israel together in the same group. And uh, anyway, we became very fast friends and have been friends ever since then. And while I've never been out to see him, he, he's not been to see me. We've seen each other a few times in uh, other places. His name is Dr. Craig Johnson. And he, and I, he shared some things with me about resurrection that I kind of want to just grab hold of a little bit this morning and, and share with you, just kind of launch out from there. He, uh, Craig is, is, a, is a great man. He's a real wonderful man. He pastors Bethel Fellowship, which is in Agoura Hills. I believe I'm saying that right. Agoura Hills, California. And that's in the mountains that overlook Los Angeles and, and Hollywood. And God's enabled him even, even to re reach out to some of these celebrities and bless them. He's got a show on TV. He's, he's a seminary professor. He's written books. Uh, anyway, he's just a wonderful, wonderful man. And I'm so thankful to be able to, to share his friendship. Three facts we need today to know about resurrection life. Well, let me begin just by, by touching on a couple things that Paul said. One is 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 2. He said, I am determined to know nothing among you except Christ and Him crucified. You see, a lot of people, they want to take that away. That's, uh, that's the unpleasant side, see. There's the violence. There are churches now that they want to be, uh, hey, you know, I'm, I'm as hip as you can get. <laughs> there are churches that really want to be hip. They want to be cool. Well, I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in us being who God has called us to be. Right. Being the people of God Amen. in this world. Well, thank you, Lord. There are a lot of people, though, that they want to take the cross out of their churches. They say, oh, that's a negative image. And the world is, has wasted it. So we just want to take it away and, and not use that anymore. Let me tell you something. There is no church without the cross. Amen. There is no salvation without the cross. <laughs> There is no eternal life for you and I without the cross. And so we do preach Christ to you. We preach Him crucified and we preach Him resurrected. In Philippians chapter 3 verse 10 he said, That I may know Him and the power of His resurrection and the fellowship of His sufferings. Oh see, there we go again. Fellowship of His sufferings. You talk know about that violent stuff again. Well, we're also told, Jesus said it, that the kingdom of God since the days of John the Baptist has suffered violence and the violent taken by force. Now what does that mean? That means that you and I ought to be sick and tired of the way this world is running roughshod over the blood of Jesus Christ. We ought to be sick and tired of it. We ought to be sick and tired of them abusing the name of the Lord. Of them treating Him with contempt. Right. Making him making him an object of scorn and laughing at him and laughing at his body, laughing at the church and believing. Let me tell you where God is. He's laughing at them. Yeah. They think that they've got the upper hand. They're wrong. 
Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father but by Him. I was talking to one of my friends on Facebook a while back. And he still is my friend, but he's a man who's much in need of prayer. We went to Bible school together. He went on to seminary, and there was a cemetery. I mean, the seminary that got to him. And he became a Buddhist while he was in the seminary, if you can believe that. At an evangelical seminary, he lost his faith in Christ. And he was trying to tell me that it was... It was all the same story, no matter whether it was Buddha or Muhammad or Jesus. And I said, well, then I think Jesus was crazy. I think we ought to just throw him out altogether. Either that or we need to receive him altogether and throw the other ones out. Either he was crazy and a criminal, or he was who he said he was. And he said, I am the way. Not a way, the way. The truth, the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. Not through Muhammad, not through Buddha, not through some blue elephant that's got ten arms on him. I don't know how many arms that guy has. I don't care about the million gods they got on every corner in India. I don't care about these Hindu false gods. I'll tell you what we care about today, and that is Jesus, who is alive, he's well, and he is soon coming. So you and I today can rejoice in that. Let me tell you about resurrection. These are things that you and I need to remember about resurrection life. And it may seem kind of a different thought to you, but let me, let me just approach it in this way. First of all, resurrection works even in the midst of death. We've experienced that. I know very few people that I, I remember I, I would uh, meet people on occasion, and even I met some Bible school that said, well, I've never been to a funeral. I've never been in a funeral home. I, I just really am uncomfortable with the whole process. I, I, I really, I didn't want to see my nan or my papa or, or my mother or my daddy. They, I, I didn't want to say that. I had one guy tell me, he said, I don't know what I'm going to do. If my daddy should ever die, I said, well, you better get ready because he's going to. And so are you. Amen. One time my dad, you know, you have, maybe you never felt sorry for yourself. I feel sorry for myself sometimes. Just have one of them little pity parties. They're no fun. No, 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 no streamers, no balloons, no cake. It's a bad party, I'm telling you. Yeah. You have a pity party, you feel bad about everything. And, and I went over to see my dad one time and he said, he said, son, i got to tell you something. I said, what's that? He said, I'm going to die. And I said, I am too, Dad. And he said, what's wrong with you? I said, I was born. <laughs> That's when I started dying. Yes. That's when things began to degrade. And they, they, they're degrading at a, at a faster rate now. Yeah. I don't know how you feel about it, but... It, <clears throat> That seems to be the way it's going. But let me tell you, that's what that's not what our lives are about. No. This is just a, a suit of clothes. This is just something we wear around when we walk on this earth. And sooner or later, somehow, some way, someday, we're going to leave it behind unless yeah. Jesus comes first. That's it, right? And that very well can be. And it suits me just fine. I'm not worried about it either way. I don't spend days wondering about how I'm going to die. I just know that if I do die, I'm going to go and be with the Lord. Yeah. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Yeah. Is what the Word of God teaches us. Hallelujah. I, I, that's the last concern I've told y'all before. I've, I've had a number of occasions where my life was nearly taken from me. And I didn't spend time worrying about spiritual matters at that moment. I just thought, I hope this don't hurt real bad. <laughs> Dying is not the thing. It's the pain I was dreading. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think the Lord was offended by that. He didn't. He wasn't too happy about it either. No. If there's any other way, other, you know, if there's some, something else we could do, because you and I, no matter how much we think we've ever suffered, you better get yourself up out of that gulf right now, because Jesus Christ suffered. Jesus Christ suffered in a way that we can't even comprehend right. the details of, of what crucifixion would be all about. 
That's something that you and I don't know about. We don't see that kind of thing happening in this world today. We see violence. We see uh, unspeakable acts. You can watch them online. You can see the ugliest things there if you have the desire to look. But let me tell you something. In spite of that ugliness, in spite of that violence, the cross was a far worse fate than you and I can imagine. Even in the midst of death, however, resurrection power is at work. This is the way people feel. I mentioned my dad a little bit ago. He was, he was my best friend. He didn't give his heart to the Lord till right before he passed away. And I, I was on my way there to be with him. And when I got to the hospital, my younger brother was sitting out of the steps of the hospital, out of the front steps, and I already knew then as soon as I saw him, it was too late. But I, I, I said, I know where he is. And I'll just, it'll be a little while until I get to see him. Yeah. We'll go and put his, his body down in the Knoll Cemetery in South Alabama, but that's just the clothes he left behind. Yeah. That's just the outfit he wore, and he wore it out, believe me. He wore it out with sin. He wore it out with disobedience. But at the end, he turned to the Lord, even as the thief on the cross, and said, Can I be with you in paradise? And Jesus said, Today you shall be with me. This day you shall be with me. All who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I've sat by the bedside of people that were in comas, and I preach that word to them. You think that they don't hear? Debs, can I, Debs and I can tell you, not long ago I had an opportunity to speak those words, to speak that truth, to pray that word over a man that was in a coma, a man that was seemingly unaware. And when I began to pray and speak those words, he began to move. I believe his spirit was reacted within him. And I don't know where he went. I can't tell you what the end is all about, but God knows and he knew. See, that's the only person besides him who knows what's going on with you in eternity today. Nobody else can say. They, they might have a good guess. There's some people it's not hard to guess about. <laughs> they pretty much make that known. And then there's other people, you know, they like the scribes and the Pharisees. They, they got the show on. They do the right thing, say the right thing, act the right way. But what's inside is life at work within death. What's going on in the spirit of the individual? Have they come to life? Has the spirit been resurrected from the dead? Have you taken the faith, the gift of faith that the Lord has given you? Have you laid hold of it and you decide to get right out of the grave? The Word of God tells us that He took away all that fear of death, yeah. that fear of the grave. And now, well, when it's uncertain, we don't know what it's going to be like, but we don't fear it right. because we already know. Yeah. Heaven's going to be, there's a lot more in the Bible about hell than there is heaven. Heaven is a place you wonder if to. Hell is a place you better shun. So Jesus and the Word tells us more about Gehenna, about that place of sorrow and suffering and pain and gnashing of teeth. Oh, it's just terrible to even think about. But when we think about heaven, it is more than we can comprehend. It is, it is something that is beyond our human ability. You might be the smartest man in the world. You might have the, the most intellect of anyone around. But that does not bring you into that place. Mighty man can build rockets, fly to the moon, but he can't get to heaven. Mighty man can, can find the key and he'll go to the door, but he can't unlock it. Mighty man thinks he can do these things, but man can't do it. Jesus has done it. As a man and as God. We are surrounded by death. It's all the time. Everywhere. When we look around. If you've ever, if you've ever had the chance to... Well, some of you all might see the, the haunts of your childhood every day. I know some people that never left Rockbridge County when I lived down there. We said, well, we're going to run over to Roanoke and go to Sandra. They said, oh, wait, a Roanoke? 
He had 40 miles. I said, another county. Why would I want to go there? Well, they see those things, and maybe they don't notice the changes, but I'm telling you, I've been back where I was raised up, and I'm thinking, oh my goodness, what's happened here? What has happened here? It's, it's degraded. It's not the same. It's worn down. I didn't know that I'd ever feel that way until I got to be this age. And then I look at things and I think, what in the world happened? Debs and I went to the uh, general conference of the uh, International Pentecostal Hole in this church, and we saw a lot of our friends there, people we went to Bible college with, other people we knew, and, and I thought, oh my Lord, they look so old. <laughs> And then I thought, maybe I better go look in the mirror and see what they're looking at. <laughs> they probably say the same thing. They don't say about them, because I always say she looks the same. But be they, they, you look nice. Don't you lie in the presence of the Lord. He's here. Don't you lie about that. <laughs> you can just say, well, you're still here. You're still here. Let me tell you what life with that resurrection power is. This barrenness. It's nothing alive, nothing fruitful, nothing that is familiar. It's barrenness. It is that aching desire, that aching desire to, to see something happen, to know that there is a purpose for life. That somehow, some way, a difference has been made. You've said something. You've done something. You've been somewhere. But if it's barren, it's fruitless, and it is pain, and it is suffering. When we lived in South Arkansas, I think we went, I don't know how many years, like, like I don't know if I had it up here during that time or not, but we went through a drought. And one summer, I don't think it was a day that it was under 100 degrees for I don't know how many weeks. Even the weeds were dying. The red ants. Y'all have red ants up here? Oh, yeah. Oh, man, they're getting everywhere, aren't they? When I was a kid, we 